welcome back to my channel. So today, continuing my series on master perfumers, we're gonna be covering Anne Flippo. She is another well-known perfumer that's created lots of hit fragrances. If you are new here, then hello, welcome. I'm all about perfumes, and I have this range of videos talking about master perfumers and their best creations over the years, as well as hundreds of other videos on whole ranges, perfume notes, so much stuff so do check out my other content and if you're a regular viewer do make sure you're subscribed and give the video a thumbs up that really helps me and I will leave links in the description box down below to where you can get all the perfumes I talk about in this video where they're available around the world UK Europe Australia US Cool, so Anne Flippo is a French perfumer. Lots of master perfumers are from France. And she has been working with the IFF International Flavors and Fragrances since 2004. The IFF is one of the main employers, I guess, for perfumers who were then hired out by companies that are creating perfumes for brands. And the perfumer is effectively the chemist, creating the scent, coming up with, you know, different versions of it, reviewing them, testing it, and then also like actually doing the chemistry and the formulation and all the technical stuff in the lab as well. She studied perfumery at the school there in Versailles, which I just think is so cool. Can you imagine going to college like in Versailles, like in the most insane palace ever? And if you've been watching a few of these videos, you've noticed a lot of perfumers tend to have like a theme or a type of fragrance that they tend to create and um, sort of specialize in, or maybe it's their personal preference friends and Anne has created or been part of the team that's created over 200 different perfumes over the years. So if we start off with Chloe, so she created Chloe, Chloe? Chloe Love Story as well as its two flankers, the Eau de Toilette and the Eau Sensuelle. I think Love Story may be discontinued, I'm not sure. Chloe have their like Chloe signature range they have Chloe Nomad and then they had Love Story, but I think Love Story might be discontinued, but it probably is available still. Love Story is a really fresh, citrusy floral using notes like Neuroli, which is like slightly aromatic lemony scent, orange blossom as well. And like a lot of the Chloe perfumes, it has a slightly musky base, very fresh, floral, clean scent. She also created the original Coach perfumes, the Coach the Fragrance for women and then Coach for men. Coach the fragrance is actually a really nice very affordable fragrance full of a rose heart with some like fruity top notes and they actually use a suede note in Coach which I think is great because it echoes of course the fact that Coach is like a handbag leather goods brand so it has that nod to the origins of the brand. You can usually find the Coach fragrances at really affordable prices and I do recommend them particularly Wild Rose which she didn't create but it is a great rose perfume but the original is a great everyday fragrance just like Love Story. For Diesel she created Loverdose Tattoo that's discontinued. If you're regular here you'll know that I do like the Loverdose perfumes. I love that iconic heart shaped bottle. Again we've got a bit of a rose heart but this one has quite a milky sweet feeling to it and we've got citrus again in the top note and a cassis a black currant note. So again a little bit of a fruity nod with that rose heart. For Ascada in the 90s she created the original Chiffon Sorbet. Now this has actually just been re-released by the brand by Escada. Chiffon Sorbet is a violet fragrance so there are some fruity notes in there but it's primarily a musky powdery violet fragrance. Violet is the fragrance accord that you get in things like eyeshadow, lipstick, that very feminine powdery scent which I find very comforting. So if you were a fan of Chiffon Sorbet in the 90s it has just come back and I've just done a video actually reviewing it along with the other new Escada perfumes. And then she's done a huge amount of work with Estée Lauder. So their beautiful Magnolia that came out the other year, one of my top recommendations for springtime, summertime, it's probably my top Magnolia perfume it, because it's great for lasting. Magnolia is a really delicate floral scent and usually in fragrances it's so delicate it fades or it gets dominated by other notes whereas in Beautiful Magnolia it actually projects and lasts and performs. It's a great magnolia fragrance like delicate blossomy springtime fresh. Really recommend Beautiful Magnolia the original Eau de Parfum and you might have seen that recently Estee Lauder have relaunched a lot of their classic fragrances like Private Collection, Estée Azor, 
they've re-released them in these um, sort of reimagined, modernized versions. They, the, the originals are still sold, but they've done this extra collection as well. I did do a video on it and um, she's been part of the team that worked on these. The project was led by Frederick Mal and she was part of the team that worked on a lot of those new creations. And she has actually worked with Frederick Mal. One of his best-selling fragrances is Synthetic Jungle and she was the person that actually created this. So I think Frederick Mal, he's more of a, I don't know what the word is, like creative director of fragrances. He's not the actual perfumer, the scientist that makes them. And Synthetic Jungle is a very very green fragrance, almost like Chanel number no. 19, one of the few very green fragrances. You've got mimosa in there, loads of typical green notes, um, basil, oak moss, definitely one for fans of very green fragrances. And again, it's great for lasting. And there aren't that many green fragrances out there. Then for Giorgio Armani, she created the Aqua de Gio, not the original one, the, the newer version of Aqua de Gio, yeah, it has a slightly different spelling. And again, this is quite a fresh green perfume. It has that mint note in, very refreshing, kind of thing that you would wear, I don't know, like straight out the shower or in a spa or something like that. Calming, re fresh, relaxing, quite summery. But then she also created the Because It's You fragrance for Armani and um, for women, which is kind of a bit like the coach fragrance in that you've got a rose heart and then a raspberry top note. So that berry and uh, rose combination. And then it has some vanilla in the base as well. She's also worked a huge amount with Givenchy. So one of my top five fragrances that I love is their Irresistible Givenchy. Um, this is a fragrance I absolutely love. Again, it's a rose fragrance, but it's very fresh, dewy, watery rose, and it has a really fresh pear note, which is a top note. I love pear and perfumes, and again, it adds that kind of watery refreshingness um, to the fragrance. It's a really pretty, really sparkling fragrance, and she's worked on all the other editions that have come out of it, and then she also has created the Lente Deep fragrances from Givenchy. These were the original Givenchy fragrance um, called Lente Deep. It was created for Audrey Hepburn, obviously a long time ago and L'Anthony means forbidden in French and five ten years ago they re-released re re it, new bottle, new scent and it's been a huge success and she's then been involved in all the different versions of it. Again this is a white floral, it's pretty good for lasting, it's very classic, it's very classy. I personally like the intense version of it the best because it has this really unusual sesame note in it which makes it very like comforting and warm. I recommend it for autumn winter but the classic Lantidy is a great fragrance if you're looking for something really elevated and what I tend to find with Givenchy fragrances is that they all have really good lasting power. Then for Jimmy Choo she created Jimmy Choo Illicit which I think is discontinued but you can still get it. Uh, again this is quite a citrusy fresh floral a little bit like the Aqua de Gio one but it has some sweet honey in there as well so you've got orange and a bit of ginger so it's got a bit of a kick in the opening but then it becomes very sweet caramel vanilla quite a comforting fragrance a little bit like Jimmy Choo Fever which I think is why they didn't really need both she's worked on a lot of the Jo Malone fragrances you may know that Jo Malone is no longer involved in Jo Malone London the brand she sold it a long long time ago to Estee Lauder I think so Anne was involved in a lot of the aromatic ones that came out, uh, the ones with like fennel in, coriander, the green bottles. She also created their basil and neroli, honeysuckle and divana, so um, quite green, fresh fragrances. And then for Lancome, she's worked on a lot of the Olivier Belt fragrances. So Olivia Pong, um, who's the, now the in-house perfumer for Chanel, created the original Olivier Bell, but then moved to Chanel. So since that, Anne has been involved in creating loads of the different versions of Olivier Bell. The Intensement version with the raspberry, the En Rose version, which is that rose raspberry combination again. Some of the newer ones like the Extract, the Iris Absolue. I have detailed videos on all of the different Olivier Bell fragrances and an article on all of them as well. So do check them out if you want more of a deep dive into Olivier Bell. For Thierry Mugler, she created the Angel Elixir that came out recently. So the Thierry Mugler brand was sold to L'Oreal a few years back 
I know a lot of people haven't been loving the new releases that have come out from them since then but of course Original Angel is a very strong patchouli praline perfume. The Angel Elixir is quite different, it has a lot of white florals in, jasmine and then it has a vanillary woody undertone so it's much more typical of a lot of perfumes that have come out in the past few years, things like Paco Rabanne fame you know a lot of the best sellers at the moment are jasmine and vanilla and angel elixir is kind of just like that it doesn't really have the uniqueness of the original angel but it is much more like mainstream and then for paco rabanne she created lady million uh, which again is a very white floral fragrance and then she's worked on all the flankers as well which some of them have like a honey note in or a sweet berry note in so again this combination of like white florals berries or slightly honey vanilla undertones. And she also created Paco Rabanne Olympia, which is a very vanilla-y fragrance, a little bit of salt in there, uh, quite a strong vanilla. I definitely want for fans of like a good sweet vanilla perfume is Olympia. And then for Mademoiselle, for Roches, she created the Mademoiselle Roches fragrances. The original one is that combination of rose and fruity notes again. And then the Couture one is a little bit warmer with Tonka Bean. I really like the Couture one. The, the Mademoiselle Roches fragrances are very affordable. Um, you don't really see them advertised or promoted, um, but they're a great everyday affordable fragrance. And then another vanilla and jasmine combination, she created Victor and Rolf Good Fortune, um, which yeah, is literally vanilla and jasmine. It also has some of those aromatic notes in as well with a fennel. And I think that works very well because those sort of fennel notes kind of remind me of the scent of like going into a fortune teller's hut in a I don't know, in a fair or, or whatever. And then lastly, a really big hit is she was part of the team that created YSL Libre. So again, we've got vanilla undertones and white floral, jasmine, orange blossom heart. Libre then has this aromatic lavender tone to it. Um, and she's worked on the intense version, all the different versions. I personally like the Eau de Toilette best because it has a lot of orange blossom in. Um, but you can see there's definitely a theme with her perfumes of jasmine, white florals, vanilla bases, some aromatic notes, and then also separately perfumes that have a rose heart and a fruity top note. So those two things seem to be a theme throughout her career. So guys, let me know which your favorite is that she's created from this list. Like I said, they'll all be linked in the description box. Yeah, so let me know what your favorite is from Anne Flipo. And do give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, that really helps me. Uh, but that's it guys. So thanks so much for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.